we didn't. Good evening. Welcome to Calvary Road Baptist Church. We'll go ahead and stand. We'll sing our 2021 theme song, Let the Church Arise, Rise Up and Build. Ready? Let the church arise. Let us stand for what is holy. Let us stand for what is right and build the church to be a beacon in the night. No, we will not compromise. Let the church, let the church arise. Hymn number 335, Showers of Blessing. We'll sing all four verses of Showers of Blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior. for Jada, Ms. Smith's cousin in the hospital dealing with insulin. That's right. Okay, thank you. Any other prayer requests? Continue to pray for Garrett in boot camp. Do 
praying that you don't shut the base down. Okay. For a second, I thought we were praying that you did shut the base down. So I don't know. All right. All right. So he finishes in September. Um, all right. So if you haven't heard him yet, make sure you do that soon. And you be praying for your own little pandemic there. Georgina. Two West Pelicans? Ms. Leslie. His father in law had a stroke. Yeah. All right, pray for him. your friend's name is Drew. Pray for Drew's father in law had a stroke. Anybody else? Prayer request? If you will, please pray for the teen activity this Friday. I've been saying that the fiance from Crossroads is coming in. And, uh, nice to have a few people here for him to preach to, <clears throat> and just overall that God would be a part of it, obviously. And then next week, Brother Herb was supposed to preach the last one, but Brother Herb had something come up, so he's preaching this coming one, not this Friday, but next Friday. And then, of course, the one after that is uh, Cameron Manorese. So the Manorese family will be in, they'll be singing, and then he'll be preaching. So that's the one where all the churches are coming in. Course, we have our birthday on August 21st at 1 o'clock. So, could please connect with myself and Ms. Leslie about that if you're willing to be a part of that. Um, but, anyway, yes, please do pray for this activity this Friday. Like I said, Brother Deontay from Crossroads will be here preaching and uh, praying the Lord to be a part of it. Anybody else this evening? All right. Uh, continue to pray for Pastor Miss Ashley. Eli's flying tomorrow. Eli flies from Nashville. Nashville? From Nashville to here tomorrow. So if you can, just pray for him to safe travel. But we'll go ahead and take some time to prayer and uh, feel free to use the altar. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for sal salvation. Thank you for creation. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for extension. Lord, just thank you for your tender mercies and your grace and your love. Lord, just thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. And Lord, I ask you can help us to do what you'd have us to do. Help us to go where you'd have us to go. Say what you'd have us to say and live how you'd have us to live. And just let your will be done. God, I pray that you can give us what we need, our daily bread, and just and clothe the rain with the finances, but also the grace, the mercy, the peace, the love, and fill us with your presence like only you can, and just help us to live Christ-like, and let your light shine, and Lord, just give us what we need, the grace, the mercy, and the strength. Help us, God, and Lord, I pray that you can forgive us of our sins, our faults, our failures, help us be holy, humble, clean, righteous, and pure, and just forgive us of our transgressions and faults and failures. And Lord, I ask that you can please be with the request tonight, Lord. I pray that you can be with Leslie's friend, Julie, her father-in-law who had a stroke. Just give uh, grace, mercy, comfort, and health, Lord. I pray that you can give health to Miss Smoot's cousin, Jada. And I pray that you can be with her in the hospital and just help her insulin. Just give her strength and give her grace. Give her mercy. Give her comfort. Be with the family. Give them strength and comfort. Lord, I pray that you can be with Georgina's unspokens and work in those situations, whatever they might be, and that you can work and move. Lord, I pray that you can be with Garrett and the Paris Island uh, pandemic they're experiencing. I pray that you can just help them not to shut everything down and help them things to go as planned. That way Garrett can graduate, but at the end of the day, just keep everybody safe and uh, let your will be done. And Lord, I ask you to be with us tonight. Be with Brother Eddie as he preaches. Lord, I pray that you can fill him with your power and your boldness, fill him with your spirit, and give him the words to say and help him to say exactly what you have him to say. Lord, we need you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Eddie's going to come preach for us, and I'm excited to listen to him and hear what God put on his heart for him to say. And Brother Eddie, we didn't come here to go home, so whatever God put on your heart, go ahead and preach, sir. Amen. How is everybody? Good. Uh, Romans chapter 16. Turn to Romans chapter 16. And reading verses 17 and 18 to begin with. And Romans chapter 16 and verse 17, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I'm going to pray. Um, dear Christ, our Savior, we just uh, pray that you'd help us right now and your word. And um, uh, I just pray as I thank you those that prayed. I pray that you'd help me to, to say what you want, not what I want. And help me to um, preach out of love. And, um, but help me also, and I praise you what you're going to do there, and I just pray that you also help me to preach the truth at the same time. And um, your name, our Savior, we pray, amen. Um, preaching on tonight, um, beware of false doctrine. And that's basically the, the title. Um, you know, when we look at the Bible, uh, the Bible tells it like it is. And um, Jesus and John the Baptist in particular, they told it like it was. Um, there was a man on the radio in between 2000, I, I, I might be wrong, Somebody correct me, even shout it out, or raise your hand if you, you can remember. But it was between 2005, 2010, 
somewhere. I don't know if you remember him, Brother Smoot, by Harold Camping. I guess I'm saying his name right, but 107.9. I don't know if y'all remember him, uh, but it, it may, he was, of course, he was been on the radio for a while, and uh, of course he was teaching false doctrine on this radio station, but he was very popular. And uh, even had some pretty good music, you know, pretty good Christian music. Um, I can remember 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning coming home one night listening to uh, When We All Get to Heaven, you know, on that radio station. There's some good music sometimes. Um, but he's preaching Calvinism. And as far as I know, he was like the president of the radio station. Could be wrong. But... Um, uh, he made statements and like, I guess, in the, I, I don't know, I cannot remember exactly, so please don't quote me. It was in the late 90s, he made some statements and then 2000 and then 2007 or something like that, statements of when the world was going to come to an end. You remember that, Brother Smoot? And um, I, I don't know what happened with all that, but eventually he got sick. Eventually he was off, but... Um, uh, you know, I, I just, I really want to preach tonight to protect us as a church. Uh, I believe we're all saved here, and, uh, and, and some of y'all probably know more than I do about this, maybe, but um, there's some things that I, I feel like need to be said about, um, I've hit on a little bit before, uh, the false doctrine. Um, I want to say something about... Um, I want to read this, I want to read some verses, but you know, um, the Jehovah Witness, I don't know how many of y'all heard this, uh, you know, he, Charles Russell, he was a Baptist one time, and uh, I don't know how many of you all heard that, and eventually became a Jehovah Witness, um, and it's it's easy for us to to go that way if we don't watch it. It's easy for us to follow the false doctrines out there if we don't watch it. We need to be aware. And when I say what I'm going to say tonight, I don't want anybody to think I'm better than anybody else, by the way, on live stream or, or whatever, whoever's out there listening. And, uh, you know, um, I worked for a Jehovah Witness for a while. And a uh, very smart man, I, I heard he talked before between before people and uh, we had our few conversations and um, and the things I'm going to say uh, a lot of the things I'm going to things I'm going to say tonight uh, those that are in false doctrine they get up here and say yeah that's the way we believe and but some might be out there you may think well you're you're judging well uh, I'm just telling you like it is <laughs> they're going to get up here if they were here tonight they would say yep that's what we believe with a smile. And there we get up here. Um, Christ, though, and John the Baptist, there's a few verses um, where they just told it like it was, bluntly. Um, look at Matthew. Keep your finger in. I'll tell you what, we're just going to turn to scriptures. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Um, verse 13, Matthew 23 and verse 13, and it says, But woe unto you, scribes, this is Jesus speaking, and Pharisees. Now, I don't know how many today would call themselves scribes and Pharisees, but uh, we hear this word a lot, hypocrites. Uh, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering uh, to go in. Now, now, we to get saved, you know, I don't know if we should go to our boss when he does something and call him a hypocrite. Uh, a person that, uh, a, a young lady that may get saved and her husband's not, I don't know if she should go home and call her husband a hypocrite and uh, so on and so on. Um, but Jesus was bold, and he was telling it like it is. And um, I guess if the Spirit leads, then uh, we need to do what God wants us to say. But um, woe unto you, verse 14, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. 
For ye devour widows' houses for a pretense and make long prayer. Uh, therefore ye shall receive the greater condemnation. But verse 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for compass, ye compass sea and land to make a, a one proselyte. Proselyte means here basically a, a new uh, convert to a cause. Uh, even goes along with evil influences, somebody that's, that's influenced uh, by evil ways. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Um, verse 16, uh, woe unto you, ye blind guides. There's a word, there's a name. Uh, which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. And verse 17, it goes even deeper. Uh, ye fool and blind. Uh, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. We, we hear things people say sometimes, and uh, we may have these thoughts in our head, you know. Uh, man, that was a hypocritical thing he just said, or that's a foolish thing they just said. And uh, why would somebody say that? Don't they fear God? Uh, but yet we, we, we see it through here in the scriptures. Uh, Matthew 23, going uh, uh, at the end of this, near the end of this chapter, verse 33, Jesus says, Ye serpents and ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Um, and then we got uh, in verse 24, again, uh, 34, I'm sorry, vipers is mentioned. But uh, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, now you, we hear Jesus, he's God, we understand him. Uh, speaking this way because he knows the thoughts of men and he knows their hearts. But then you got a man by the name of John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3 and uh, verse 7. It says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Um, there were statements that John the Baptist would make. Um, Luke chapter 3, verse 7. You can turn there and read it later if you want, or now if you want. But uh, it says John the Baptist calls them out and calls them vipers. And uh, how many people are we out there we see that uh, they, they act as strange or, or they, do, they do things that are not according to our doctrine? And um, they were called uh, we, we may have the thought that they're called, they, 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 they're acting like a viper. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we don't hear the statements today of a Pharisee, Sadducee. The little joke is that the, uh, the, the, the Pharisees, they were judgmental because they weren't Pharisee. And the Sadducees uh, were sad because they didn't believe in the resurrection, so they're sad, you see. Um, that little joke or whatever that, that we got about them, but um, today it's, it's, it, it's, it's hard to, to, to be joking about things when we look at it. And um, I mean, we don't go to the door and um, just automatically come out of our tongues, you know, you're, you're such a viper, or you know, you're such a, a, a blind guide, and you're a fool. Uh, we just don't come right out and say that. Um, um, you know, how many false doctrines out there are there, though? And I'm, the next few minutes, I'm just going to go over some of them. And I feel like God's wanted me to say some things about this tonight and uh, just warn us. And we need to be on the watch. we got a lot of things going on in the news. And, um, uh, and, and I hear things, and I, 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 I my brain, the way it works, I forget things quickly nowadays, so i got to go home and ask Leslie, did you hear about this? I wasn't listening to the news. I said, oh, well, I don't know if that was right or not. So i got to watch the things I say. I don't know if I'm right about all the news that I hear sometimes, but uh, I try not to listen to too much of it, to be honest with you. Um, but um, I think Christians in general, we need to watch our walk, and I think one of the ways uh, we need to watch our walk is the prince of the power of the air. And ultimately, these false doctrines and, and these false ways and false views come directly from the devil himself. And, and uh, he's the prince of the power of the air. And uh, we need to pray to Jesus. 
I feel. That's what I try to do anyway when I hear something. I try to. Uh, I fail sometimes, but I, I need to go to Jesus when I hear something um, and, and ask God to take care of it. But um, the false doctrine is out there. I, I haven't been in too many other churches lately um, than the independent Baptists wherever we go, whether it's Solid Rock or Independent, uh, Woodlawn, even our old church and here. You know, I, I, I hear our doctrine, and, and I want to stick to that. I really don't want to go outside. Um, but the things that are going on that we need to be watching as maybe we witness to somebody, what kind of answer we're going to give? Maybe you could write some of these things down. Uh, one of them, though, it, one of the false doctrines that are out there that we need to be aware of, I believe, is Calvinism. And it's, and it's a thing that um, people are, uh, they don't, if they don't read the Bible, you can, again, you can be easily deceived. Um, there's some things here that are mentioned that they believe. Um, I, I got written down. They believe that man isn't capable of any good act. Um, I want to turn to some verses as, a, as, a, as much as I can. I'm running times quick, but John chapter 1. Man isn't capable is one of the things they believe of any good act. In John chapter 1, to refute it, and uh, I love these verses that uh, refute, and God's word can refute any false doctrine. And um, the Bible says, John 1, 11, he came on his own, his own received him not, but uh, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. We got the power of God in our lives. There is good in us because of Christ. And that's the only good we got in us. Uh, there's another one they believe. They believe that um, uh, salvation um, is choosed only by God. Man don't have any say in it. Um, the Bible says what? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. They believe that, um, uh, you know, they, God's choosing, that, that sect that he chooses, whoever it is, uh, Christ only died for them. That's not true. Right. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. And I'm not going to go there, but Jesus tasted death for every man. Uh, Jesus died for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves everyone. Just He didn't die just for uh, their sect and few or whoever it might be. Uh, they also believe um, men and um, women, before they get saved, they have no right to uh, resist. Now, I'm not for that anyway. I think a person should accept Christ, right? Every time we go, soul went in. That's why. But they say man can't say no. They have that 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 they can't do it. Well, Matthew 23 verse 37, uh, they wouldn't. It says they rejected there. The Bible speaks the truth, and we just need to let the Bible speak for itself, you know. Um, man, they, they believe that um, uh, man, whether uh, he's saved, uh, that, that he can't know that he's saved. Well, the Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, these things are written so, you, so that you may know that you have eternal life. John 17, 3 um, says that we can know Jesus Christ. Just, I want to try to do a word study maybe before I die on that, on the word know. There's so much that the Bible talks about us knowing as Christians. And I think there's uh, a lot we can know and even learn. Uh, two dangers of believing in Calvinism. The one is, of course, um, What's the use of going soul winning if God only chooses and man doesn't? What's the use of going to church? Um, and, and in fact, Harold Camping preached that. There was no church. You didn't need to go to church. Well, Hebrews tells us we need not to forsake the sibling of ourselves. I'm not quoting exactly right together. And we need to go to church. Um, Another false doctrine out there that I really think that's um, heavy, and uh, we have a very popular actor uh, that's involved in this movement, and his name is Tom Cruise. 
And it, it is the, you say, well, why are you, why you marking him? Why are you I'm not really judging him. I'm just telling you what he believes. Again, if he was here tonight, this is what he would tell you he believes. He believes in Christian Scientology. And, and the Bible, Romans 16, again, tells me to mark. And I just want us to watch. We got things on TV. We need to watch. We need to watch out what, what people say. I, I'm telling you, I hate to say this, but no, I better not. I'll leave that one alone. Never mind. But um, it, it, the Christian scientists, what they believe, um, it, they, they, um, they believe only some scriptures are, are inspired. Uh, the Bible tells us in John 17, 17, thy word is truth. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. 1 Peter 121 tells us that holy men of God were, were moved by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures. They are inspired. Um, Christian scientists claim that the blood of Jesus can not cleanse one of their sins. Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 2.13, we're made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. Colossians 1.14 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Um, Christian scientists uh, believe in evil, uh, they believe in evil uh, is an illusion. And um, uh, they don't really believe that sin exists. Well, the Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned. Calvinism and Christian scientists, uh, it's a very popular one today. They're, they're very popular, two movements. And, of course, then we got the Mormons, right? And um, the Latter-day Saints movement. Jeho jo not jo Joseph Smith, right? Um, they believe that God himself was once a man. Well, 1 John 5, 9 says God is greater than any man. 1 John 5, 7, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they are one in 1 John 5, 7. And I'm going through these sort of fast, and I don't know why, um, but time is rolling. But um, I want to I read something in Hebrews chapter 1. And, and I, I know we probably quote this at the door, some of us, and uh, uh, to those that don't believe that Jesus Christ is God or say that Jesus Christ was just a man. I want us to read Hebrews chapter 1. And I had somebody very smart from a big Bible college one time tell me, well, you can't use this against the Jehovah Witness. And I guess I'm just stupid enough not to listen to him. And nobody's ever argued with me at the door over this passage of Scripture. So I just keep on being stupid, I guess, and use it. But uh, Hebrews chapter 1, it says, God who hath sundry times... And divers' manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also, and this is God the Father, he made the worlds. Jesus, verse 3, who being in the brightness of his glory, the Father, and the express image, this is Jesus, of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he, Jesus, had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, Jesus, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, Jesus. For unto which of the angels said the Father, at any time, he, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I, the father, will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he, the father, bringeth in the first begotten into the world, Jesus, he saith, the father, and let all the angels of God worship him, Jesus. And verse 7, and of the angels he saith, the Father, who, the Father, maketh his angels spirits and his ministers, his being the Father, a flame of fire, but listen, unto the Son he saith, the Father he saith, 
Thy throne, O God, Jesus is God. Right. Is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness and a scepter uh, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness, Jesus, and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, Jesus, even thy God, the Father, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. Jehovah Witnesses, God the Father, is what they believe is the only God is God the Father, is, call, is calling Jesus Christ God. And, Jeho and, and, and the Latter-day Saints, they got this similar kind of belief. And um, Of course, they... Uh, I hope I'm not stepping on your toes. You all know this. They don't believe in drinking coffee. I, I, I don't know how many of you all know that, but that's what Jehovah, uh, Mormons, not Jehovah Witness, but Mormons, they don't believe in drinking coffee. Um, so anyway, that's just a side note. But it, they don't believe uh, that um, Jesus Christ is God like the Jehovah Witnesses. And I don't know how many realize this, but they believe that Jesus Christ and Satan are brothers. That's the Mormons. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to read this. Just mentioning that. I don't like mentioning it, but that's what they believe. But I want to refute it with this. 2 Corinthians in chapter 6 and verse 14. It says here, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light, Jesus is the true light, with darkness? There is none. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? They've got their book of the Mormons, and that's what they go by. They're going to tell you they don't. They got the Bible also, but when you show them the scriptures, they're going to have to stutter and go to something else. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? They are not brothers. Um, Jehovah Witnesses. I, I feel like uh, somebody else could probably come up here and educate me more on this, but there's some things we already know about the Jehovah Witnesses, right? Uh, but, uh, just like the Mormons, Hebrews chapter 1, I believe we can show the Jehovah Witnesses the same chapter because they don't believe Jesus Christ is God. Who was the founder? Well, we know it was Charles Taze Russell. He was the founder of Jehovah Witnesses. Again, we mentioned earlier, he was a Baptist. Um, I don't know what happened there, uh, but um, there's a few things I learned when I worked with my boss. Uh, I understand that uh, it was either him or another guy. They, they, they paint and they do, they do sound solution in the and I uh, hope, uh, I don't know, I guess if they're watching this, oh well. Um, he's not my boss right now, so uh, he's probably laughing if he hears that. But you know what? He uh, doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is God. And there's a few things I didn't understand, and maybe you all know this already. Uh, they don't go along with the military. Uh, I worked on a couple bases, and... They didn't go on the jobs. The owner of the company wouldn't go on the job. He had a cousin of his that he would send to run the job, which was, I, I, I want to I wanna almost say he's saved, but uh, he goes to a different church. But uh, him and I would go do these jobs, these military-based jobs. They wouldn't go. I don't know how many of y'all know that, but um, they don't believe in voting, as far as I know. And that's pretty wild when you think about it. Um. They're smart, and these people are smart, and uh, I, I want to be smart. I really do. I want God's wisdom with dealing with things. I'm, I'm closing right now, but I mentioned this the other day. I think we was, I was talking about something about this, but, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. Um, again, when we lived in Prince George's County, uh, out there by FedEx Field, about a mile, there's a 7-Eleven out there. Of course, Leslie knows where it is, but I can remember yelling out verses to Jehovah's Witnesses at the 7-Eleven. I wasn't right. And I was screaming, and I was yelling, 
because they made me mad and I got off guard. But um, a soft answer turneth away wrath. And uh, we need to love them. Every one of these cults, and there's more. I don't have time to get into them, but the Muslims have their own so-called Bible, the Koran. And when you read it, it's not as peaceful as they say they are. There's hate. They're supposed to kill us. Um, if they were to do their job, uh, I might, we might, some of us in here go soul winning, we might not be existing today if they were probably doing their job for real. Um, because that's what they're told to do. It's full of hate. Um, and um, we need to be wise. Jesus sent the disciples out, and what did he tell them? He says, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And uh, a soft answer, we don't always have to be yelling. That's one thing I've learned as far as witnessing. I don't need to be yelling at these people. <laughs> uh, but they make you mad. <laughs> That's the problem. They can make you very upset. Um, <clears throat> he remembers this. I'm going to close with this because it goes along with every one of them. And um, this is a simple thing. And, um, you know, uh, I believe that um, 1 Corinthians tells us the preaching of the gospel is foolishness unto them that perish. When we go out soul winning, we can't be afraid to share the gospel because we think it's foolish. We got to share it and we got to give it out. Um, I was riding home with, we went out and did a job, me and my, the owner of that company, he was Joe Witness. And we had a big, con we had a conversation. We talked, I guess, for about an hour. And um, as far as I know, he's talked in front of thousands. And um, I, I, I ended up sharing something I learned from Pastor Paul years ago. And I thank God for Pastor Paul. And I learned this. And it goes along with all of them. The Muslims, the Mormons, the whole witnesses, you know, right down the line. And, and I really, I like this thought. And I said to him as we was pulling into the job, we were, another job we were supposed to go to, I said, look, I said, you know, let's say you're right. Because we talked about a lot of different things. And I said, let's say that you're right and I'm wrong. I said, I've done a pretty, you know, I, I thought, you know, I've done a lot of handing out tracts, helping out people and things like that, and, and, and just helping out people. Let's say that I'm, I've been wrong, just dead wrong all, all along. And all these beliefs... None of them. You check it out. Believe in an eternal lake of fire. And uh, some of them believe in, even if they do, they believe it's a doctrine of annihilation, where they're in the eternal lake of fire for a little while, and they just fizz out. So I told them, I said, you know, let's just say that I'm wrong. I'm just going to die and go to whatever your punishment is you think to believe, and I'm just going to fizz out, whatever. And I said, but if I'm right and you're wrong, you're taking a chance of going to an everlasting fire for the rest of your life. And if we can take that in a loving way, now, like I said, he, he's, he, I hate to admit this, but he's probably nicer than me sometimes. He's a very smart man. I love my wife's talk, my, my family. You know, he's a very nice man. I just want him to get saved. I want God's love to burn in me in such a way I just want people to get saved the way Jesus did. And I don't want to turn anybody away from the gospel ever. And I don't want to, again, I prayed earlier, I want this to be a loving message, and I hope it was to those that may be listening that aren't saved believe some of these things maybe and I hope hope people would get saved through all this but the thing is is God's word cannot be argued with I have faced one Jehovah Witness and talked to him about Jesus Christ being God showed him in the scriptures dead on where it was in the scriptures not me I'm just a painter <laughs> I, I try to tell people I, I'm just a just a painter. But I showed him the scriptures. He wanted to go to something else. He 
want to jump from Jesus Christ being God, then he wants to talk about hell. I showed him in the scripture where there's an everlasting fire. He wants to go to something else. And it just gets to the point where we got to try to leave them with love because I've done this before. I've messed up and messed up big time, spending too much time and not so much anger but arguing and missed out. And I caught myself one time being tempted and I said, nope, have a good day. You know, Jesus Christ, he's got a lot of names. I know you say that, uh, that uh, God is this and God is that. Well, Jesus Christ, he has a lot of names. And he's called God, too. And I just left in the most loving way I can. And I'm glad I didn't get no deep, deep theological thing because I went next door and this person was witness to her and she was ready to get saved. And I think somebody followed up with her, but... Um, she was ready to get saved. And if I'd have spent my time arguing, we got to watch out for arguing and avoid foolish questions. We really got to watch that. Because there's a person next door, because we get prideful, we want to prove our knowledge. We need to get that out of the way and try to be led by the Holy Spirit and go to that next person because there's people out there that need to get saved. And um, we, need to, we just need to preach Jesus in a loving way. Um, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I just want to, if you're out there today, you say, I don't know I'm going to heaven. The Bible says you can know. You say, I, I, um, I, uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, the Bible says in 1 John 4, 13, that you can know. Um, the Bible says you can't get saved by going to church or doing works. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God. You say, I don't know I'm going to heaven and I want to know. Well, the Bible says that we're all sinners, for all have come short of the glory of God. And because of that sin, uh, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and that means it's eternal lake of fire. But listen, God does not want you to go there. And if you realize that Jesus Christ came to die on the cross, not only die, but raise again, and he lives and he's alive. And if you call on him, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon him shall be saved. And if that's you right now and you want to get saved out there on live stream, if you're out there and you, you want to get saved, I can lead you in a prayer. I'm going to say a prayer. If you'll just repeat after me, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I'm calling on you, Jesus Christ. God, I, I pray that you come to my heart and save me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And help me to know I'm going to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've done that, then... Um, then please call us. Please come to our church. We'd love to have you. Um, dear Lord, I just pray you bless our night, and uh, please strengthen us through your word. And I pray we take these things and just um, keep our minds focused on you and not be so concerned about others. Lord, help us to keep our minds on whatsoever things are true, and uh, help us to have our focus on you, the author and the finisher. Jesus, we pray that you bless the rest of our night. And uh, bless all the prayer requests tonight that were mentioned. Bless Pastor and Ms. Ashley as their way and keep them safe. Uh, please strengthen them. Help Eli as he's coming back. Please keep him safe. Help everybody uh, that's missed tonight. Help them out there to feel close to you, to be close to you. In your name, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Pastor Garrett. Amen. Thank you, Brother Simpkins. I was... Uh it was a necessary message. I just finished a series in Sunday School for the Teenagers on knowing what we believe and why we believe it, being able to back it up from Scripture. And 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you through a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And I appreciate Brother Simkin's message tonight because it is important that we know how to give answers from the Scripture on what we believe and why we believe it and in meekness and fear. And then, of course, Colossians also says it all the way with grace, seasoned with, seasoned with salt. And so I appreciate, you know, the way Brother Eddie delivers that and how he says you need to know what you believe and why you believe it. And you also know how to do it with love and compassion. And, you know, you need to know when to walk away. And you need to know when to defend the faith. And it was a good message. Thank you, Brother Simpkins. Appreciate that. It was good. Um, I just want to say I will not be here Saturday. Um, for, for those of you who are going to go out visit, visiting, um, et cetera, cleaning the church, whatever's going on Saturday. This Saturday, a couple friends of mine from college are getting married, so I'm going to be at a wedding in New Jersey. Um, 
I think a few people from our church might be heading up there. So that's this Saturday. I will not be here. But there is the teen activity Friday. And, of course, well, I'll be here Sunday as well. So just wanted to make that note. And uh, hopefully I uh, look forward to seeing all the youth Friday at 630 as when the activity starts. If you can, please be praying for that. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Give us all safe traveling mercies home. Bring us back for the activities Friday, visiting on Saturday, and, of course, service on Sunday. We need you, Lord, love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the church said?